and good morning. It's your favorite uh, friendly neighborhood to Ronan. And today we're going to be looking at the F7F <laughs> Tiger Cat. Now this is a very late war, uh, World War II development. Uh, those of you that, uh, if you'll take a look at your tech tree here for just a moment. Um, when you look at this XP-50. This was an early development of the Tiger Cat. So it has a bit of a storied history. Uh, it had a tricycle landing gear. And it never actually fought in World War II, though it was out there in the field being used by the USMC, United States Marine Corps. Uh, it was developed as a carrier plane out of the entire production uh, series, only 12 of the last variants were ever built that could actually work off carriers. That being said, why was the Navy interested in it? Well, you don't find 460 mile an hour torpedo um, attack aircraft out there very often, do you? This thing was fast for a propeller aircraft. It could handle 2,000 pounds of bombs. Uh, it came with... 420 millimeters, and they will notice that they are right there at the ring, ring woods, right there. And then had 450s right at the nose. Uh, all, by the way, stationed in such a way as to keep the pilot uh, uh, from being night blinded. And there's a reason for that. Uh, many of these uh, variants were used as night fighters. Uh, they did see combat in Korea. Uh, though not extensively. The night fighters were used in interdiction roles, and uh, they shot down a couple of um, Soviet uh, biplanes. Uh, and that is the combat history of the aircraft. It, it was an amazing piece of work. Uh, unfortunately, it came so late that the next uh, generation would be uh, jets, and so very quickly, uh, by 1954, they were all phased out of uh, active service. But it was an interesting aircraft as for the pinnacle of, um, you know, one of the pinnacles of propeller-driven uh, aviation and a very effective uh, aircraft. What does it mean in game? Well, let's talk about this a little bit. Survivability is 500 points, which is excellent. Gun armament is uh, 723, and that is right out of the box. Let's look at the upgrades. This is in a completely unupgraded aircraft. You get to purchase these uh, from uh, the, the uh, previous uh, aircraft. So there's no research involved. And then uh, you get the airframe. You get your obligatory eight uh, uh, increase in airspeed. And um, survivability jumps to 550, you know, 10% uh, increase right there. Uh, you go up to 775, you get all your engine upgrades. There we go. Uh, it doesn't take a, you know, you're going to be up just over. Uh, with the airframe and everything, you're going to be just over 800 knots, and that's in a Tier 7 fighter. So this thing is quick. It Coming out of the box, it is as quick as the uh, P-38J. Uh, interesting aircraft. The firepower in it is staggering. Let's, and for all intents and purposes, given the narrow cone of it, you don't really have a divergence problem. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when you string the guns out along the wing, the way that they're normally done, then the only way to make sure that the all your fire <clears throat> all your firepower comes up on your uh, target is to make a cone, which means you have to come into a very specific uh, direction or a very specific distance for it to be uh, effective. Typically, that was about 300 yards. Um, yeah, so, but in this case, you have this <clears throat> stream that comes out in this very, very narrow, looks like five foot area, where you're going to have all this available to you. And, so when you look at it, 
all the way out to 2,500 feet, you're going to have uh, 460 uh, damage per second. And if you get closer, which you will given the speed of this aircraft, it will increase to 640. Also means when your M20s overheat, you still have 200 uh, DPS um, available to you because machine guns are going to be much slower to overheat. All right. Take a look at equipment that I would recommend for it. Um, that is what I would get first. Because the problem with these aircraft is, as you can see by the aircraft's uh, specifications, even when this goes up to, uh, when you go get your airframe upgrade and you get your 23 uh, points of addition, you're talking about a fairly unmaneuverable aircraft. Yeah, it's not going to, you know, if you get in a dogfight with anybody, you're an idiot, okay? And I do it on a regular basis, you know. I'll just turn with this fighter a little bit. Um, and that's fine as long as you stick with that. The minute you start trying to go into a turn, you're going to be a dog's breakfast. There are lots of aircraft out there that will eat your lunch. Let's look at a multi-role fighter just for comparison. Where you're talking... Uh, 737 in the best of cases, or uh, just shy of 700 with two fairly immaneuverable uh, multi-role fighters. You're a heavy fighter. You cannot turn with them. Now, whether that was the case in actuality, uh, remember, folks, this is an arcade game. We're not trying to reproduce the aircraft exactly. As unfortunate as it is for me, because I have an historical bent um, and have authored and uh, edited an awful lot of articles uh, in Wikipedia uh, on this specifically. Uh, not the Tiger Cat, but on other aircraft. So, yeah, it does bother me a little bit. But this is a good game and well worth it. Uh, your upgrades. You're going to want to get the 5-inch rockets. You know, there's a minor hit in speed. Who cares? Um, the bombs are going to cost you about 3 uh, uh, miles per hour and kilometers per hour which comes up to about 1.2 miles per hour um, and you're going to come up with negative uh, uh, 7 here so you know can you spare 4 miles per hour 5 miles per hour on a 460 mile per hour aircraft I suspect so okay so um, your upgrade path on this is fairly limited and it's, uh, they're not large gains. You probably will very much want your aircraft upgrade for the points, if nothing else, for the maneuverability. It helps, a lot. It helps you out a little bit there, 5% or so. Uh, when you start talking about your, uh, your airspeed, you know, yeah, it'll help a little bit. Let's go fly this thing. I have never flown this before, so it's going to be an adventure for both of us. I've been waiting for this aircraft a long time because I have been a victim of these things far more than I have killed them. They're hard to catch, obviously. And I have uh, never flown it before. First time in the aircraft. I hope this will be exciting and I won't make a complete idiot of myself. But we'll see. I've been known to do it. As uh, the astronaut used to say, Dear Lord, do not let me screw up. But it's been known to happen. And hopefully we'll get into a battle here shortly. There we go. All right. So this thing should play to its forte. Now this is not a extremely high altitude aircraft. You're looking in the 400s, almost 5,000 feet. After that, it should be perform adequately to, adequately to about 7,000 feet. Um, we'll see. We'll give it a try here.
It is a pretty aircraft, I will give it that. I'm very pleased with the appearance of it. Might have to put a paint job on this. <coughs> you are approaching the front line. All right. Off we go. <coughs> so I have my bomb. No, that wasn't the actual loadout on the aircraft. It actually could come with a pair of thousand pounders. But that's okay. Well, you got a bomb. Then we can go back and be a heavy fighter. Now, I'm going to do the cowardly thing and get the heck out of the way before they can shoot me. And I will come around. And you notice how quickly these aircraft come apart. You also will see that I'm not really trying to... Um, maneuver with these aircraft as much as I am position myself for the next run. Do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time and then get the heck out of the dodge. All right. And he's trying to make a run on me so we'll just mosey on out of the way here. And doing it. Wow, that was quick. Okay, so we've locked this up, taking a lot of damage, um, but we do have two bases set up now. And I want to get up to altitude. Okay, so just shy of 6,000 square uh, feet is where you're going to be at. And this is another terror of the skies that I have learned to thoroughly respect and hate. Uh, it also killed him in the first pass, which is nice. And that's kind of the mode that you want to be in. Now I've got somebody on my tail, don't like it, and I haven't got engine uh, restart on this, and that was obviously a mistake. Alright, so I didn't kill that aircraft, I killed somebody else's aircraft apparently. Huh. Alright. Or there are two of them. It's a mystery. Marcus again because he's obviously terrorizing um, our people. Can't have that. All right, so we have repaid his kindness in full. cannot get into uh, dogfights with this. Don't try. Use your range. Use it as a uh, boom and zoom long range sniper. It is extremely good with this. I'm getting uh, continually surprised by how much range you have on this. It's like flying an F uh, the uh, Corsair Dash 4 uh, variant because it just so vicious in its firepower. Um, all right, we have a 
2T coming in here. And remember to not let your speed kill you. up you have 30 seconds of boost on this aircraft just amazing there's a 410 <clears throat> high flying low maneuverability aircraft are exactly your meat you want those aircraft And the fact that he's giving it's after one of our teammates makes him even more of a priority target. Now these are not uh, low health aircraft that I'm attacking. That two t uh, IL-2T, for instance, is just... I don't think I have to do anything with that uh, particular target. Um, that IL-2T has quite a bit of hit points, and if he rigged it out right, he has even more. Say 26, again, excellent target for us. What you're trying to do is dominate the high altitude spaces with this. He's got range, he hasn't got that much range. There we go. Now normally you go up there with a single engine fighter and the thing chews you all up because uh, of his tremendous defensive firepower, but we've got more than he does and by a long margin. Okay. In this case, what you're looking for is aircraft that are trying to climb well beyond their capabilities like this fellow. pass. You're done. Get out of there. You do not want a dogfight in this thing. Get to the edge. Let them lose interest in you. And there's an A26B. This thing is bad news for normal fighters. You do, and it will just hang over an area and make your life hell. You do not want it to hang around. It will do a lot of damage. Again, you same problems you're always going to have with uh, 20 uh, millimeters that you're going to overheat. All right, there you go. This is very tough aircraft. Okay, that Ki-44 is just not something you want to mess with. 550 uh, somewhat power. If I'd had an engine restart right now, I'd probably be a heck of a lot safer than I am. This guy is flat after me. I've got my engines back and speed saved my life. All right. Probably, I'm sure I didn't get 14 kills or something. Um, but I'm very sure that I added a lot to keeping uh, the high altitude area to my team. Yeah, seven kills, one assist. I've certainly had more kills, but this added a lot to actually winning the game. All right, they're not meaningless kills. Uh, you can go after bombers. You can rack up 15, 16 kills, and I will promise you that in most cases it won't make a tinker's dam to actually win into the game okay all right so we did that team score came in number one uh, hmm. we'll take a look at this one more time actually one and make good money on this that's always nice the experience is always nice Okay, so you can go take a look at your upgrades, see if you can get something here. There we go. So 
So I suspect that this will be a very good aircraft for me in the future. Um, it is a very nice turn and burn aircraft. You'll want to go ahead and, uh, to the degree that you can, uh, get your rockets so you can actually have a, uh, uh, a ground attack version. There's a time when you're going to have to help your uh, ground attack and multi rolls uh, take out a, a target. Uh, a thousand pounder do a lot of damage. Your Havar rockets will do, uh, will help you take out, uh, 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 might get two ground targets out of the way and then go back up and, and boom and zoom. Uh, so I like the versatility of that. Um, especially things like mining bases where normally a uh, fighter can't do a thing. There's not even fighters to fight over a mining base. With this, you can. And you can also use it to take out the other side's um, uh, ground attack aircraft, multi-role aircraft uh, that are attacking that mining base. Every time that you take out one of those aircraft and they're in the middle of capturing uh, uh, ground areas, you actually reverse all the damage they did, flip it over to the other side. That's a nice addition to the team. And what I'm trying to do when I'm talking about this is start rising players up to better ways to play. Um, I will tell you, two games ago, I watched, we were down four caps, and I watched every plane we had chasing bombers. Every last plane. And then they were squawking, why are we losing? And it was very hard for me to not say, duh. I finally said, you're chasing bombers, you're down four caps, and you're wondering why you're losing. Really? What about those caps that are accumulating, you know, three points per with every second? What about the mining base that you ignored This, you know, not only does that, but gives you another 120 every 120 seconds. That's, you know, that's effectively four influence points every three minutes. You know, that's a lot of uh, uh, influence on the game and towards winning the game. So be a little more tactical about how you handle these things. Uh, you'll notice I now never once really tried to turn with an aircraft, and that's exactly how you have to play this. It's not a good um, dogfighting aircraft at all. Now, that's not to say if you don't reach uh, something like a Meteor. Let's go look at the UK line. Um, you know, that thing's not going to outturn you. Okay, you can dogfight with, it's Dance of the Elephants type of thing. Um, but you can dogfight with it. Okay, or to look at some other examples here. Uh, You saw me take out a 410. Again, that thing can't even maneuver with you, though. Uh, you know, it's not saying a whole lot, right? Uh, so, go back and look at the tech tree again. Uh, this is going to be a very worthy competitor to you. This air speed is going to be uh, up there. In fact, it's going to be a little faster than you are. You, um, but uh, gun armament is not going to be nearly as good. Uh, just taking a quick look at it here. Well, they'll get up there. Okay, but anyway, you get an idea. You can dogfight with the thing. Uh, am I going, you know, it's not going to run circles around you like uh, the KI-84 that you saw which will get on your tail and kill you very quickly. But it is giving up over 100 kilometers per hour. Um, so, you know, it's, it's coming in there about 670. You've got, you're got uh, uh, coming in the game with uh, uh, 767. You can quickly, you know, take a run at it and just run away. And if you're in a dive... You're going to, that's going to happen even better. 
So you start looking at this, that's how you deploy the aircraft. All right. Hope you learned something from this. I certainly have enjoyed this little outing. I hope it can be helpful to you. Let me know if there's anything else that you would like to see in the game. Um, certainly help uh, open to uh, suggestions here. And I'll say it once, I'll say it again. This is uh, not invented here. It is not something I suffer from. Um, I'm more than happy to take a look at the aircraft you want to take a look at if I can get them uh, immediately. I will. If I can't, I'll start working towards it and we'll demonstrate it. Appreciate you very much. Uh, please remember to like the video if you like the video and to um, subscribe. I need all the subscribers I can get. Uh, the ch channel is now over 100 subscribers. Uh, given the small base of the player base here, that's amazing, but I need more. And so your help will uh, be greatly appreciated. You have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.